Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik wa zida ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Dear brothers and sisters, greetings of the peace. In Islam, health is a bliss of divine blessing. Everybody is legally required to preserve it, to promote it, and to prevent all types of harms and inflictions that will inflict on it. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, Salullah al-afiyyata wal-yaqeen Fama u'atiya ahadun ba'da al-yaqeen shay'an khayran min al-afiyyati Fasaluhum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Fasaluhum Allah ta'ala The Messenger says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ask Allah for health and well-being, that is the afiyah And certainty, that is yaqeen for after Yaqeen, no one is given anything better than the well-being and the health, the afiyah. So ask Allah for both. That is the, the teaching of Prophet Muhammad Islam as a way of living provides guidance on every aspect of our life. When Islam requires you to do something, to undertake certain actions, to achieve certain goals, it also provides the steps, the roadmap, the means to accomplish them. Therefore, fiqh is rich and replete with the instructions related to the health, life and health care. One of the top teachings in this realm is Islam's emphasis on tahara, the cleanliness and hygiene. Why does a Muslim need to do ablution multiple times every day? Having bath, how a believer is achieving the purity from a major impurity, al hadath al akbar, as the purpose behind the stringent rulings discussed in the fiqh tahara, the rulings related to the cleanliness and uh, the hygiene in the fiqh chapters. Maybe these are the few questions that will pop up in our mind when we go through the detailed and comprehensive discussions in the fiqh books about the tahara. One answer for these questions we can find in the Quranic ayah, in the chapter of Al Ma'idah, ayah number six. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after explaining the rulings related to the wudu and tayammum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends in Quran that particular verse by this wording Allah does not want to impose any hardship on you but wants to make you pure and to bestow upon you the full measure of his blessings so that you might have cause to be grateful. From this ayah, the last segment of this ayah, we can find the three wisdoms, three reasons for the benefits of the ablution, of the purification. The first one, the rulings of Tahara are for upholding the purity, the hygiene, the cleanliness of an individual level, also on a social level, a societal level. Secondly, it entails the pleasure of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the ultimate goal of every believer. Thirdly, it is not a burden. It is an extension of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's grace and mercy on the humanity. The concept of hygiene is actually in fiqh, interrelated with social implications medical benefits, spiritual progress. For example, in an Islamic ruling that prohibits uh, going to the masjid for the jama'ah prayer after eating the garlic and onion because of the bad smell. So in this ruling, we can see the aspect of tahara, how to deal with the fellow beings. It also concerns about the oral hygiene. But more than that, it takes into account the insignificant harm of a bad breath to to the fellow people at the account of missing the reward of the jama'ah prayer, the congregational prayer. So from here, the notion of tahara steps ahead from an individual duty to a social interactions obligation. In addition, the oral hygiene, that is a very important aspect 
oral hygiene when it is discussed in the fiqh books some scholars even count more than 70 benefits which includes the physical psychological spiritual and medical benefits imbued in the practice of correct oral hygiene through the siwak brushing prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi say were it not that i might overburden the believers i mean if i were if this instruction become a burden on my ummah if i don't fear of that i would have ordered them to use the siwak brushing at the every time of the prayer from this hadith itself it is obvious and it's conspicuous for us how much importance islam has given for the oral hygiene and we have thousands of the fiqh books written by our earlier scholars and the contemporary scholars in nearly almost all fiqh books begins with the chapter of fiqh tahara the opening chapter is fiqh tahara the islamic jurisprudence of the hygiene and the cleanliness in this chapter we can find several sub chapters the sub chapters include the different kinds of the water tahur tahir mutanajjis najas and their roles in the purification rulings related to the wudu the ablution related to tayammum dry ablution related to ghusl bath rulings related to menstruation dietary laws toilet etiquette these are the the first opening chapter almost nearly all books written in islamic jurisprudence it also includes the instructions about the circumcision uh, oiling the hair cutting the nails removing the hair well maintenance of mustache and beard applying the kohal in the eyes using the perfumes and so on and so forth these actions are called actually as sunan al fitra the acts that correspond to the primordial nature of human beings in addition the fiqh books emphasis on one important point that the acceptance of the worship acceptance of the prayer depends on the cleanliness of trio that the cleanliness of the body cleanliness of the cloth the garment the cleanliness of the place of the worship so maintaining a healthy nature of body and the flawless uh, physical appearance is an important subject matter of the fiqh books fiqh tahara also discuss the toilet etiquettes in detail and sets certain rules in the sub chapter named istinja istinja means cleaning the private parts after relieving oneself in this fiqh gives exhaustive instructions to keep oneself clean after going to the bathroom after going to the toilet for example it explains how to make the urethra free from the drops of the urine this action this act is called as istibra that is an obligatory duty that means after going to the toilet even a single drop of the najis the impurity should not be there to affect the purity of his dress and the body also the sub chapter is the istinja istinja means cleanings the private parts detailed rulings we can see istinja shouldn't be on the way when the people will people come and sit and it should be in the people's pathways or on a shade or under a fruit tree prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say beware of being one of those who were cursed they will be cursed then the sahaba asked or the messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are they he said that those who urinate will people pass by and rest so these are the instructions related to how to maintain the cleanliness physical level psychological level spiritual level in his surroundings in the social interactions what are the medical benefits that is an important subject matter of the kutub the, the text written in the islamic jurisprudence to sum up islam regards the hygiene as a cornerstone of the practice of islam if you want to practice islam you have to have the comprehensive and holistic and meticulous care of the hygiene it offers holistic care of the health on the one side and offers rewards 
for the spiritual world on the other. Let's explore more. See you again. Thank you very much.